Hi, I'm Bob Larson. Millions around the world know me as the real exorcist. I actively and aggressively battled demons for five decades. I'm going to share with you now what I've learned about how the devil uses culture, politics, and even religion to deceive and destroy. Some very important events are coming up. They're going to put them on the screen so that you can see them. And as always, like, share, let people know about what's going on, and subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube so that by hitting that notification bell, you will be aware of other things that we're going to be doing. Do demons attack randomly? Or do they carefully plan their strategy? Watching, waiting for a spiritual opening in your life. I want you to be aware that demonic entities have targeted you for moral and spiritual harm. I recently shared a blog entitled, Beware Monitoring Demons. I hope you go back and read it or watch it on YouTube. I warned that monitoring demons exploit spiritual problems which go unresolved, like constant brushes with danger or death. They may even target with an unusual number of physical diseases and bodily illnesses. Monitoring spirits keep you under pressure with constant oppression. They hope that you will fall into temptation so they can report your weakness to a bigger and nastier demon. Well, I'm going to take this warning that I gave in that very specific blog vlog that was released some weeks ago a step further. And I want to tell you exactly how these observational spirits keep track of you day and night. There's an interesting passage of scripture many of you are familiar of, 1 Peter 5, 8. Your adversary, as the devil, walks about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. This speaks of the devil and demons walking about, encircling our lives like a roaring lion, seeking prey. Now, I've been on a lot of safaris in the jungles of Africa and various countries. And I remember one time early in the morning watching a pride of 16 lions stalk a single wildebeest. And it's one of the best illustrations I've ever had of this passage of Scripture. They looked absolutely unconcerned about this wildebeest as these lions move all sizes, all ages, male and female, in concert, gradually surrounding this wildebeest. He thought he was just out there in the jungle having a normal day until he looked up and saw there were lions in every direction. That's an example of what the devil does. Now, I also need to say to you in the beginning here, I recognize that this is somewhat extra biblical. That means that there's no particular scripture or context that we can place the idea of monitoring spirits into. We have to take a look at all the Bible says about how demons operate and a scripture like 1 Peter 5 8, and then find ways in contemporary language to describe it. So, to be plain, the Bible does not speak of monitoring spirits by that designation. But there are many places in the Bible 
in addition to 1 Peter 5, 8, where we're told don't let the devil get a toehold. Don't give the devil opportunity. And to be watching out for the devil, like Ephesians 6, where we have the armor of God. So the concept that demons are out there looking for ways to attack us is replete in Scripture. And I didn't come up with the idea of monitoring spirits. I don't even know who came up with that term. But it's good, and it aptly describes what I want to talk to you about. Now, as I said, these kind of demons don't attack directly. They just attract other spirits who pick up on the surveillance that's taking place by the monitoring spirit. Satan is not omnipresent. Omnipresent is one of the attributes of the character of God. He is always everywhere all the time, but the devil is not. The devil is a time-space creature. He's in a particular place, as are his demons. So they can't be everywhere all at once. So then how do they mimic the omnipresence of God? By having so many billions and billions of demons constantly on the move, giving the sense that Satan is already, always already there. And, and that's what a monitoring spirit is. So a monitoring spirit is like an omnipresent spirit. There are so many of them looking out for ways to attack. These are emissaries monitoring certain individuals to assess which temptations, which fears that person is most vulnerable to. So, building on what I already said in that blog, and again, I encourage you to go back and read the blog or watch the vlog. It's posted on YouTube. If you want to see the written version of it, you simply go to boblarson.org, go into the blog area on our website, go into our archives, and type in the proper search word, and it'll come right back up. But here's what monitoring spirits do. I want to give you the basics of what the characteristic of a monitoring spirit is. Number one, they track your movements and your morals. I mean that quite literally. They monitor you. To monitor someone, you've got to hang around them. You've got to follow them. You've got to go where they go. You've got to be around where they are. That's what these spirits are. And people who have experience the presence of what we can refer to by this designation of monitoring spirits. Talk about constantly seeing a shadow out the corner of their eyes or looking here or looking there, always feeling like there's some of their, something over their shoulder or something always in the room or something is in their bedroom or something's in a particular part of the house. So they are following, tracking. Again, Satan is not omnipresent. So Therefore, he has to send his demons out to keep track of the people that he most wants to attack. And they keep track of your morals. It's like they've got a spiritual checklist, and they're keeping track of what you do and what you don't do. So if you have a, a particular sinful indulgence, whatever the category of that indulgence is, a monitoring spirit is watching what you do to report back to the master designer of all of this, which is a hierarchy of demons, leading back to Lucifer and Satan. And then they make their plans about how they're going to go after you based upon their surveillance of your activity. So they track you. Secondly, this is what you need to know about monitoring spirits. They are very patient. They'll watch you for years. You know, we read stories about these spies and people with the CIA and other intelligence agencies. I was reading recently about some of these who originated in Russia, and to cover their tracks, they actually moved to South America and spent years, these spies from Russia, and this is contemporary. This is something that have just recently revealed. They spent years in South America developing an alternative identity with names and learning the language, etc. They became South Americans of this particular country, and they stayed there for a long time. 
I don't recall the, exactly what it was, but it was nearly a decade before they finally moved to the country where they were going to do the spying. But they had a cover. The cover was they thought they were from South America. Nobody knew anything about tracking the origin back to Russia. So demons are like that. They are patient. Monitoring spirits hang around. They wait for years. They will wait for decades before striking. They're building a dossier on you. They know what you do and don't do, what you like and what you don't like, what your spiritual patterns and habits are. And they know that there could be a time now when there's no point to attack because you are strong in the Lord. But they see where there's chinks in the armor. They watch to see ways that they can eventually wheedle their way in. These are monitoring spirits keeping an eye. And when they have the sufficient amount of evidence as to what your greatest susceptibility is, they're going to pass on the word to the other demons who are part of the real attack upon you and say, hey, we've been watching out for so and so all this time. These are their weaknesses. These are the things they often give into. Here's what their problems have been. Here's what their susceptibilities are now. And then they attack. Now, the third thing that these spirits do is they monitor your accomplishments, even your spiritual accomplishments, seeking to turn them into humiliation. We're going to mention some names. We're not going to go into the details. I don't have to. Most of you already know about these individuals and many others I could put on my list, like Robert Morris, Tony Evans, Carl Lentz, Ravi Zacharias. I believe that these particular individuals have had monitoring spirits watching them for years, and in some cases, decades, looking for a way to orchestrate an attack on them. And they may well have gone on in their ministry, assuming that Satan just wasn't paying any attention, deluding themselves into assuming that they could continue where they were without anything catching up to them. But it did. And Satan wants to humiliate the men and women of God. And as I said a moment ago, they will monitor for decades if necessary, keeping that dossier constantly in motion, adding new entries to it, looking for the time to attack. So let's go back over this again. I said, here's what monitoring spirits do. First of all, they track your movements and your morals. Secondly, they are patient and may wait for years or even decades before striking. Third, they monitor even your positive spiritual accomplishments to use them against you to turn it into humiliation. The fourth thing they do is they learn your weaknesses so they can destroy in a moment which you may have taken years to achieve. Whether it's in your relationships, maybe your marriage, maybe your business, some calling that you have, they're watching. They're not just saying, oh, here's a weakness I attack. No, they're making a list of the various weaknesses and they're analyzing it. These are monitoring spirits. So they know the right moment to move in, to destroy everything that you may have given yourself to for an extended period of time. And the fifth thing they do is they attack at your point of highest success to bring you to your lowest humiliation. The devil really likes to do that. He will hold back. These monetary spirits just keeping an eye on things. The big boys, the big demons, they're not coming in for the attack. They're, they're waiting for the word that the monitoring spirits give them. As they see this person succeed, 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 but they know there are some, some places where there are seeds of destruction. They watch for those weaknesses. They keep an eye on it. They make a note of it. And then, when you get to the place of success, they bring you down. So let's summarize this. A monitoring spirit is the kind of demon that doesn't necessarily enter a person right away. It hangs around them, 
looking for information and opportunity, waiting very patiently. And they start implanting negative thoughts in the mind of the target. I want you to know not all intrusive thoughts of evil come from monitoring spirits. You might have a carnal idea that's generated from your own evil desires. You might have what's called a fiery dart of the devil. Ephesians 6.16 speaks about this. It's something that's just very quickly thrust into your mind. Oftentimes, that's the work of a monitoring spirit. When it's a monitoring spirit, you'll know by the signs that I've given you. But let me give you some additional signs of what a monitoring spirit does. Number one, it's likely it's not the first time there's a contrary thought on a particular matter has come to your attention, such as persistent lust. You may have experienced it before, but the demons are watching. They're watching to see how you react to things, what your behavior is. They watch your behavior. They watch your reaction to certain temptations. And listen, I've had demons tell me how sophisticated they do this. I've had demons tell me they can read your basal skin response. They can they can know your heart rate, your physical indications to determine whatever evil they're trying to tempt you with, whether or not you're reacting to it, whether or not you're susceptible to it. They monitor that reaction. And as I said, they monitor it over a period of time, as much time as they need to determine the best strategy for attacking you. We all need to be on guard for evil all the time. I don't want you to get paranoid. I don't want you to be constantly worried that some lurking monitoring spirit is just over your shoulder. The purpose for what I'm teaching you is to keep you on alert, high alert for the devil's tactics. Not to be obsessed with thoughts that the devil is always somewhere nearby immediately inserting thoughts and feelings into your consciousness. But I do want you to be aware, you know, the scripture that we talked about a moment ago, 1 Peter 5, before it talks about the roaring lion and what he does to encircle you and gradually seek to attack, it says, be sober, be vigilant. Be sober, be vigilant, your adversary. And then it goes on to talk about the roaring lion. So if you're being monitored by a demon, if you're walking with the Lord and you're really sensitive to the Holy Spirit, it's it's going to be apparent that you're drawn to repeated patterns of sinful behavior that you normally wouldn't be susceptible to. And that could be the sign of a monitoring spirit. Stay right there. I'll be back with a final thought in a moment. My message has been a warning. Heed the warning. Don't become irrational about it. Don't be frightened that there's a demon everywhere all the time constantly peeking over your shoulder, messing with your mind, trying to tempt you to do something. The devil knows that our own carnal desires, our own sinful fallen nature, our flesh as we refer to it, is capable, quite capable, of being disobedient to the Lord and doing things that we should not do. But a monitoring spirit is looking for something very specific looking for an open door that you might not even think about. Let me give you an illustration of a case that I just dealt with recently. A woman came to me seeking deliverance, and she had a history of being involved in the occult and the New Age, so there were other open doors that she had. She also had some monitoring spirits who were keeping an eye on her. They knew, for example, that she had done yoga. They knew that she had been involved in cranial sacral 
therapy, that she had been involved in Reiki, that she'd involved in NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. And I'm not going into all the dangers of all these things right now, but she had a long history of that and of Hinduism and Buddhism and gurus and you name it, this woman had been into it. And so she ended up in another country, in another part of the world from where she lived. And while she was there, I want you to watch, these spirits were monitoring. They followed her halfway around the world to where she was in another place, looking for a way to get to her. I already told you some of the things she was previously involved in. So she moves to the other country, starts up a new life, gets a roommate, and then finds out after she gets the roommate, the woman is a Buddhist. No, at that time, time, she's not really walking with the Lord, so she doesn't understand what a danger that is. So when this individual puts candles on the corners of the bed, she just thinks they are pretty, they smell good, and that's all there is to it. She doesn't understand that that's a symbol of a light, a Buddhism, and nirvana, and an awareness constantly to be mindful of the presence of the forces of Buddhism. She doesn't get any of that. She doesn't know that's what it's all about. She just thinks it's candles. And then she's invited to do Tai Chi. Now, I'm not going to go into a long explanation of Qigong and Tai Chi. I've written about this in my books. I've talked about it in other places. But these are forms of Oriental, more specific, Chinese martial arts. Now, Qigong is a little more serious than Tai Chi, but these are the slow body movements that you can see so many people making in Chinese culture. Now, I've been all over China and, you know, we're right there in Beijing where there are open squares and almost any time of the day you see groups of people, especially older people, because they're trying to keep their, their limberness to their limbs and their body out there going through these slow motions. But what I told this woman was, do you understand that some of these positions are named after animals and you're mimicking an animal like the crane or whatever it may be. It's very similar to some martial arts movements. And that, that you can invite animal spirits by doing that. So I said, let's pray. Let's renounce this. And while we're at it, let's renounce Lao Tzu, the founder, and let's renounce Taoism, the religion of the yin and the yang that's behind all of this. So I led her in a renunciation. The yin and the yang, the black and the white, the negative, the positive, the male and the female, the balancing of the chi power of the universe that you find in all forms of Chinese disciplines, including acupuncture and so on, and that's something else that I don't have time to get into right now. But my point is this. These monitoring spirits have been watching her. They knew about her involvement in the New Age. They saw what she was doing now. This was an opportunity. And when I began to minister to her and command if there were any evil spirits connected with all of this, a demon rose up. But it wasn't who I expected. It was Hathor, H-A-T-H-O-R. I've spirit, dealt with that spirit many times. It's an ancient Egyptian spirit, the spirit of the cow. Now we know that the Hindus in India worship the cow as the mother goddess of life. But this was also the case in ancient Egypt. that They had sacred bulls and sacred cows. What did Aaron make for an altar? A golden calf. So this was a very sacred animal. I've been to Luxor, the Valley of the Kings, and gone down to these subterranean caverns where they carved out places where they put sarcophagi, which are burial coffins. But these were massive, huge granite coffins, and they would put the sacred cows and the sacred bulls in there after they had worshipped them. But they also had sex with them. There was bestiality. And there on the carvings, in color, four or 5,000 years old, are images 
and I knew what to look for, and I actually asked the guide to show me, because I wanted to see this for myself, of human beings being suckled by a cow. Now, I know that's a little blunt, but this is what goes on. And this woman did not realize that she had this spirit of Hator. And guess where she got Hator? From doing yoga. Because the Hindus worship the cow, the Egyptians worship the cow, and along with that came a spirit of perversion. And then that tied into the Tai Chi and a spirit of Kundalini, which was there, and a spirit of a bird, because they were making the motions, mimicking a bird. Now, some of you may be listening to this and saying, this is so complicated. Are you kidding me? All of that? in this woman simply because she's doing these graceful body movements and because namaste, she is doing the positions of yoga. That's exactly what I'm telling you. She had demons. And I cast out of her all these spirits that she'd gotten. These monitoring spirits. Don't you get it? They, they got her a roommate who was a Buddhist, all right? Then they sent someone her way to get her into Tai Chi. They already knew she'd been into yoga and she'd been into the worship of Ra and some of the Egyptian gods, hence the connection with Hator. Are you seeing how this happens? As an exorcist, this is my world, this is my life, this is the stuff I deal with all the time. It's dangerous, it's deadly. And you need to walk with Jesus Christ. And if you've been involved in the New Age, the occult, if you've been involved in Tai Chi, Qi, Gong, Yoga, any of this stuff, get out of it and get out of it now and renounce it. Get a virtual encounter with me. Go to BobLarson.org. Find the many different ways that we can minister to you. And be aware, monitoring spirits are following all of us at one point in time. But some of you our choice targets, and the devil knows it, either because of your past or maybe some compromises and rebellion that you have going on in your life now. But don't worry, the blood of Jesus is stronger. Christ can protect you, and he can deliver you from all of this. Don't be afraid of the monitoring spirits. Just be aware there is that kind of activity in our world. And we need to be sober. And we need to be vigilant. And we need to know the devil is always looking around to see if there's a way to devour us. And one of the strategies is by monitoring spirits. Thank you for your support. We're going to put a number up there for those who are watching that will show you exactly how you can give and donate to this ministry. If you've been helped, there's a lot of information here that you haven't been aware of before. Subscribe to Exdunamis, our streaming platform. Enroll in Bob Larson University or just share a gift to this ministry, a tax-deductible gift to support us, to keep us on the air, to keep us providing this information to people so they can be warned and they can escape the clutches of these monitoring spirits. Through all of this, as you've heard me say over and over again, if you're walking with Jesus Christ and you're standing strong in the armor of God and spiritual warfare, you don't need to worry. You will get free, stay free, and live free. Your financial support and prayers make it possible for us to bring hope for the hurting and freedom to those in spiritual bondage. For the latest information regarding ministry outreaches, go to boblarson.org or call 303-980-1511.